This video is going to cover RNA processing, which is the step directly between transcription, where we go from DNA to pre-mRNA, and translation. So in RNA processing, um, we are on, again, page three of our notes. And in this step, there are two major events that happen to help modify the pre-mRNA after transcription finishes making this product. So first is the addition of two components. The first is called a five prime methyl G cap. And all it is, it's a special um, guanine nucleotide that is added to the five prime end of our pre-mRNA. In addition to that, a three prime poly A tail is added obviously to the three prime end. So a poly A tail just means that a bunch of adenine nucleotides are added to the three prime end. And there are a few functions of these components, the cap and the tail. They're going to help get the RNA out of the nucleus. And more importantly, they're going to help protect the mRNA from hydrolytic enzymes found in the cytoplasm. So hydrolytic means a light, it, they're capable of breaking the RNA, which obviously we don't want to happen before a, a ribosome has a chance to translate the information in that RNA strand. So once the 5' prime cap and poly A tail are added, um, the RNA also undergoes something called splicing. Now, in the RNA sequence, there are both coding sequences and non-coding sequences. So the coding sequence of RNA is what's used to actually determine the amino acid sequence. It's going to actually help make the protein. And the non-coding sequences need to get cut out. The non-coding sequences are referred to as introns, while the coding sequences are referred to as exons. We use a special enzyme containing complex called a spliceosome that contains something called SNRNPs. We, were, we call that a SNRP. It stands for small nuclear ribonucleic proteins. So if you remember this image from the beginning of our notes, um, we were looking at the factor VIII protein that helps clotting, and it's the one that gets mutated if somebody has hemophilia. And what we noticed were that most of these nucleotides were actually part of the non-coding DNA. The part that's highlighted in brown here, whoops, here, and here are the only parts of the coding sequence that are present on this screenshot. So those would be considered the exons, all of the rest would be considered introns. And we label them sequentially. So this on the page would be considered intron one up at the top. This would be considered intron two and then intron three. And likewise, we would call this intron exon one and this would be exon two. So to kind of recap with the diagrams that you guys have on your notes, we start off with DNA. And DNA contains exon and introns as well, and the entire thing gets transcribed in the process we talked about in the last video. Then we add on that five prime guanine cap, as well as a poly A tail, so those parts are highlighted in yellow. And then the next step is to remove the introns. So they get cut out by the spliceosome, and then the exons, the dark purple regions, have to merge together to give us our final mRNA. And now what we can see here is a continuous coding sequence that's no longer interrupted by introns. How I remember those terms, I think of the introns as staying in the nucleus and exons are going to exit the nucleus and get expressed. After this, the mRNA transcript is going to exit through the nuclear pores out into the cytoplasm where it can get translated into a protein sequence. And I like this image because the scissors are representing the spliceosome and basically all it's doing is cutting out the intron and then merging the two exons together. So in this diagram the red is the intron region and the blue are the exons. So just a brief overview of what we've talked about so far. DNA gets transcribed into pre-mRNA, also called the primary transcript, and then this gets converted into the mRNA 
through the process we just discussed, RNA processing, we see the five prime cap in yellow and the poly A tail. What you should also notice is that the mRNA is shorter than the original pre-mRNA sequence because the introns have been cut out. Next, the mRNA is going to exit into the cytoplasm and get translated into a polypeptide sequence by the ribosome.